ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث من هما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار بارك الله فيكم جميعا وحياكم الله واحسن الله اليكم اعتذرت ان الله سبحانه وتعالى want to extend our thanks and gratitude to all of the brothers and the sisters who have come out supporting the program here and gathering together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remember him and to get closer to him hearing from the speakers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and the sahaba they said for indeed this is the knowledge and we heard many points of benefit from the ulama of al-islam their words their teachings the extractions of the rules and regulations that are pertaining to an important matter the matter of siyam when we look at the sunnah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in connection to ramadan we also look at how he was in shaaban as was indicated But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to fast a lot in the month of Sha'ban. And the ulama have extracted from this that it was a means of preparing himself for the coming of Ramadan. And this is what is incumbent upon us to do, getting ourselves accustomed to the affair of fasting so that when the month of Ramadan comes, is not a big difficulty upon us because we've been fasting prior to the month of Ramadan. And there's a narration on the authority of Usama bin Zaid radiyallahu anhu where he stated ya rasulullah lam araka tasum fi shuhurin kama tasum fi shahr sha'ban. Usama bin Zaid radiyallahu anhu he said on messenger of Allah I have not seen you fast during the months in the manner that I have seen you fast in Sha'ban. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned that a shahr yaqful an-nas anhu bayn Rajab wa Ramadan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned that that is a month that most of the people they are heedless regarding it. which comes between Rajab and which comes between Ramadan fihi turfa al a'mal ila rabbil alamin fa uhib an yurfa amali ila Allah wa ana sa'im so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned that in this month or meaning the month of Sha'ban the actions are raised up to the lord of the creation the actions 
are raised up to the Lord of the creations. And I love that my action be raised up to Allah while I'm in the state of fasting. This is one of the benefits of the month of Sha'ban, the month that we are in. And this narration has been authenticated by the likes of Sheikh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. And during this month, our actions are raised up. But look at this narration. You find many benefits. Number one, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in, they used to be diligent in observing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he worshipped, the things he did and the things he didn't do. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the example, he is our role model. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا That indeed you have in the Messenger of Allah a beautiful example. For the one who hopes with the meeting with Allah in the last day and he remembers Allah much. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he is the example of how we should be in relation to the practice of Al-Islam. So the Sahaba, they would observe him. So Usama bin Zayd, radiallahu anhuma, he is the beloved of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the son of the beloved. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he loved Zayd and he loved his son Usama with a strong love. So he questioned the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as to why is it that he does not fast in the other months like he fasts in the month of Sha'ban. And this is excluding Ramadan. Because we know, as Aisha mentioned, that the Prophet Sallallahu he never fasted in the entire month except for Ramadan. And there is no other month that he fasts more so in except for the month of Sha'ban. So he asked the Prophet Sallallahu about this matter. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that that is a month that many of the people, many of the people, they are absent-minded regarding this month. It comes between Rajab and Ramadan. Why are the people absent-minded about this month? Because Rajab is one of the sacred months. So the people, they focus on Rajab, so as not to fall into any of the violations during this sacred month. As some of the ulama mentioned that sins committed in the sacred months are not like sins committed outside of the sacred month. So Rajab is a month that the people, they are mindful regarding it. And then as for Ramadan, then it's known. Ramadan is the month of fasting. But then that which is between it, the people are not paying attention to it. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us information which will make us be individuals who are mindful of this month. And that is that during this month, the actions are raised up to the Lord of the creation. During this month, the actions are raised up to the Lord of the creation. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned Therefore, I love that my actions be raised up to Allah while I'm in a state of fasting. This shows that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was one who capitalized and took advantage of the time. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, نِعْمَةً مَغْبُونَ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ that there are two blessings that most of the people they are negligent and they are absent minded regarding these two blessings good health and free time so for those of us who have health and the time to fast during this month take advantage don't let this month pass you by except that you are Following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fasting throughout the days. Reciting the Qur'an because it's mentioned on some of the salaf that this month that they will leave off many affairs and they would busy themselves with the recitation of the Qur'an. Preparing themselves for what? For the month of Ramadan. 
And the ulama, they encourage that we do the other acts of worship that we normally do in the month of Ramadan. We do this in the month of Sha'ban also, leading us up to the month of Ramadan. And the matter is not restricted to fasting. It's just that fasting is one of those righteous actions that are from the best of the righteous actions. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he loved to do that which is from the best of the affairs. And as we know that there's a reward for fasting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a special reward for, different from the other actions because fasting is for him. And you don't find that the riyah enters into the fast because normally a person doesn't know when another person is fasting in relation to the fast. Another point of benefit in relation to this month of Sha'ban is the benefit of the middle of Sha'ban. And this narration is also authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. Where the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam mentioned, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيَطَّلِعْ لَيْلَةَ النِّصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ لَيْلَةَ النِّصْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ فَيَغَفِرْ كُلَّ عَبْدٍ إِلَّا مُشْرِكْ أَوْ مُشَاحِمْ The Prophet sallallahu he mentioned that indeed Allah comes across the middle or the night of the middle Sha'ban meaning the 15th night of Sha'ban and the night precedes the day and he forgives every slave every servant during this night except for the mushrik or the mushahid. The mushrik, this time is clear. But the mushahid, there's different interpretations for it. But this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives the people of Tawheed during this night. So one of the main things, rather the main matter, important affair, that we must observe during this month of Sha'ban and throughout our entire lives is the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, in Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika li man yasha. That Allah does not forgive that partners are associated with Him, but He forgives what is other than that for whomsoever He wills. And this is an indication of the importance of sincerity in our ibadah. That every act of worship that we perform, it must be done sincerely for Allah. We have to purify our intentions. Purify our worship from showing off, seeking fame, seeking notoriety. Because this is something that the people have been afflicted with in these days and times. People wanting to be known. People wanting to be looked at as being the man and the likes. Your ibadah is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for the people. Your ibadah is to get closer to Allah, protecting yourself from the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your ibadah is not to attain some affair of this dunya. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in al-hadith al-Qudsi, أَنَا أَغْنَى الشُّرُكَاءِ أَنَا مَنْ أَشْرَكَ مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَشْرَكَ فِيهِ مَعِي غَيْرِ تَرَقْتُهُ وَالشِّرْكَ now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, I'm the most independent from having partners associated with me. Whoever does an action, he associates with me other than me in that action, I abandon him in his act of polytheism. So on this night, the 15th night of Sha'ban, Allah forgives the muwahideen, forgives them of their sins, showing the virtue of the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the mushrik, Allah doesn't forgive him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't pardon him. Because that matter of shirk is an obstacle between the slave and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned the mushahin. And the ulama, they have different interpretations for the mushahin. Some have mentioned the mushahin is the one who is in dispute with another Muslim. <coughs> Meaning, Muslims who are disputing with one another. And of course, what is meant by this, meaning dispute that is over falsehood. 
not the people who are refuting the people of innovation and their disputes between them based upon the truth. No, these individuals are not included in this hadith. Meaning the people who are disputing over matters that are not legislated in the deen. There is a narration, and this is a very important narration that we all should be mindful of on the authority of Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu an. قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من حالت شفاعته دون حد من حدود الله فقد ضاد الله ومن خاصم في باطل في باطل وهو يعلمه لم يزل في سخة الله حتى ينزع عن ومن قال في مؤمن ما ليس فيه أسكنه الله رضغة الخبال حتى يخرج من مقام this narration is collected in the Sunan of Abi Dawood, and it is authentic, and it is also collected in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned that whoever's intercession comes in between a prescribed punishment from the prescribed punishment of Allah, then this individual has opposed Allah, meaning the person is deserving of a prescribed punishment. Now somebody comes and intercedes to stop that punishment from being inflicted upon the individual. Showing that we must respect the rules and regulations of Allah and not try to prevent the rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being implemented when they are to be implemented. And covering for people when they are not to be covered for. Like when the people sent Usama bin Zayd radiallahu anhuma to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam to intercede on behalf of the woman who stole, who was from the, the affluent tribe, the rich tribe. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he made the famous statement that if my daughter Fatima would have stole, I would cut her hand off. And that from the ways of the people of the past, that when somebody who was poor and indigenous, when he would do something wrong, they would establish the hut on that person. But when somebody of affluence would do something wrong, they would pardon that individual. We have this in our communities. Somebody with a name does something, swept under the rug. Well, uh, crimes against the aqid and minhaj. Crimes against the deen, established things, swept under the rug. Somebody of less importance, they want to hang them from the tree. Call a sheikh right now. Sheikh, what do you got to say? To the end. SubhanAllah wa bihamdi. What about the other stuff? People coming in between. The rules of Allah, this is something that is evil. And then he mentioned whoever disputes, and this is the shahid here. Whoever disputes in falsehood, and he knows he's disputing in falsehood, that he will not cease to be in the anger of Allah until he leaves it off. Person know that he is arguing with falsehood. Know that he has no proofs, no evidences for what he's saying. No ground to stand on, but yet he keeps the matter going. This type of individual is in the anger of Allah. This is the mushahin. And then the Prophet ﷺ stated, and whoever says something about a believer that's not in him, meaning it's not true, Allah will cause him to live in the pus of the people of the hellfire until he leaves out of what he said. May Allah forgive us. Amen. Also, Al Imam Al Ozai, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that the mushahin at tariq li sunnati Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the mushahin is a person who abandons or he opposes. The sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it is as if the individual is in dispute with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like the people of innovation. Allah doesn't forgive them during this night. And rather we find the people of innovation, they're gathering in the masajids, they're having parties and gatherings and the likes, praying 100 raka'ah, reciting in these 100 raka'ah, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحْلِ 1,000 times, and this is based upon a weak hadith, and they're doing other than that from the affairs of innovations, uh, congregational dhikr and other than that. Seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, trying to get closer to Him, but not knowing they're falling under the category of being one who's mushahin. Because they have abandoned the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
to indulge in the affairs of innovation. And this is the nature of bid'ah. Whenever you involved in bid'ah, you're leaving off something from the sunnah. That's the nature of innovation. So the advice, Barakallahu feekum jami'an, be the people of Tawheed, be the people of the sunnah, and not from amongst the people of shirk, and the people of innovation, and do not be from amongst the people who argue and dispute based upon falsehood. This is what I had to present on short notice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that which you have heard of our benefit, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the brothers who have taken out of their time to come and to benefit the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward those who were key in establishing this gathering, our brother Abu Anisa, Hafidhullah Ta'ala. Jazakumullah Khairin, you know, for the hospitality. Every time I come here, the brothers are very warm. And you know, I love coming down here to, to, to visit the brothers. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us together upon Khair and make our hearts, hearts that are united upon the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with no enmity or rancor within them. And whatever is correct, the praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And whatever is incorrect, it is for myself. Wa subhanaka Allah wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha anta astaghfiru wa